This morning's uh, talk with you is a little bit, uh, I think it's very exciting and I'm hoping at the end of my conversation this morning to leave you perhaps just a little bit excited to be part of this uh, process. It's a brand new process for us uh, as the Durham District School Board, but it relates to every single person in this room. And it's, uh, it's very exciting and I appreciate the opportunity to spend a few moments and chat with you this morning about it. When I said yes to the topic way back in November, when uh, Audrey and Samantha asked me if I would uh, give a few comments this morning, the title was Municipalities as, as Agents of Change. And as the chair spoke this morning, he talked, uh, he never used the word municipalities. He used the word community two or three times. And uh, when Audrey and I were speaking just last week on this, I said, you know, really the conversation is about our community. It's less about our municipalities and more about our community as a whole. So I'm going to position it in that light. So I very much appreciate uh, the chair. He must have gone through my notes uh, last night. <laughs> and uh, he clearly was a, a wonderful lead into my, uh, my talk this morning. What we're doing in the Durham District School Board is we have a strategic plan as well. And we're going through a process right now to renew our strategic plan. The ministry's parlance for it is called a multi-year plan. Our past one was five years, and this morning's uh, conversation is going to be a little bit about how we want to engage with the community at large in a completely different way than we have ever done in the past to gather the hopes, the dreams, and the visions of our community. From that, draw out what we think are the important pieces that we hold as our commitment to the community as the Durham District School Board. Uh, you've heard the size that we are, and the number of locations that we have, and the huge infrastructure that we operate. So we think that as part of a larger community, uh, we have a piece of the larger community's vision for itself. And it's really important that we do the best we can to engage with the broader community. What we're hoping for through the process over the next few months is a call to action. If we get this right, and nobody in the education sector has had this kind of a conversation before, so using an airplane analogy, we're building the airplane while we're flying it. And uh, so we're going to be working through this process. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the roundtable structure this morning and the process that we uh, will be engaging in over the next few months. Um, and my hope is that people will start to see themselves as part of this conversation when I speak this morning. We all have a shared responsibility. Every one of us can be an agent of change. Whether or not we choose to be an agent of change is the $64 question. But considering the size of the group here today and the, uh, the types of people who are here, I think we are all coming to the table as agents of change. The kinds of questions that we want to ask uh, with our community, big picture here, are what are our goals as a community? What do we hope for? What are our dreams? What do we want our community to look like? What are our challenges as a community? What sort of things can we do thinking differently to address those challenges right across the broader community. So I want you to take your mind right now and shift it away from me being director with the Durham District School Board and start thinking about the community. Because the mindset I'd like you to have as I speak this morning is what's my piece in a conversation like this? It's not about the Durham District School Board and hopefully I'll, I'll drive that point home over the next few minutes that I speak with you. So how do we get going on this? I commented that we have a five-year strategic plan. Our plan uh, officially came to an end in 2013, so we're now in 2014. We started on a process in May of 2013 to consider where do we want to go for our strategic plan. I don't know what the length of our next plan will be. That's up to my board of trustees to determine how long they wish it to be in place. The last one was five years. The next one may well be three years, something like that. We're moving probably to a shorter time frame. But what we wanted to do, and what I did uh, in the process, was to get permission from my board that we would engage in a process. But I asked the board to work with me to think differently. And my trustees were very, very supportive. And I said, I want to do something we've not done before. In the past, our strategic planning exercise involved us designing what we thought we should be doing. We then took it out to people and it was a, a usual group of people who engaged with us, and that consisted of people in our schools, our staff, our community directly. And we would go a little bit broader than that, but we didn't get a whole lot of engagement because it was focused on our role as a school board. And many people don't necessarily see themselves directly as engaging with the local school board. 
If they have children in the system, then they certainly want to engage. Lots of people have thoughts about education because everyone has been a student at some point in their life somewhere. So lots of people have views and opinions that they would like to share. We want to engage those people, but at a different level. The big question, how do we go about gathering the views, the hopes, the dreams of our community? Not about education, but about our community's views of itself. Where does our community want to go? And if I go back to my initial comments, this is not about individual municipalities. This is about Durham as a whole and our community as a whole. We're looking for what the aspirations of the community are. We're looking for an, um, an aspirational statement or an aspirational set of dreams for our community. <clears throat> From that, I engaged with a, a thinking partner to help me design a process that was different than we had ever done in the past. I said, I don't want to just speak to the people that we've always spoken with. I don't want to go down that road. We've done that many times in the past. I engaged in that process when we did our strategic planning in 2008. So I knew how that worked. Uh, I knew the sorts of feedback that we were likely going to get and how we would go. But I wanted to start by having the conversation, not with something already drafted up. And I take it out and say to people, so what do you think? Hopefully, you say back to me, you love it. But it wasn't about that. I thought, let's, let's think differently. Let's talk about what the future could look like in Durham as a community. So there isn't something that I'm taking out to the community as a draft. So out of that came the conversation to create the Durham Community Roundtable. You'll notice that uh, what's behind me here for the logo that's been designed for it has nothing to do with the Durham District School Board. This is about the community conversation. The logo is representative of the multiple voices, the multiple views that need to be at the table to gather the kind of information that we hope to achieve. You see the tagline on the bottom. I think that speaks also to what Chair Anderson was speaking about this morning. Great people in Durham was the wording he used. But the tagline we attach to it at this point, better people, better communities. So the round table itself has a goal. And the round table hasn't yet met. Uh, I've been the last uh, month or so speaking to key individuals uh, throughout the Durham community to be members of the round table. The people who are on the round table are people who are uniquely connected in the community across a number of sectors. And I'll get to what those sectors are in just a moment. But those key people have the ability through their connections to reach out into the community across a huge number of organizations, um, subsectors within their broad sectors, to engage that community in the conversation about the future. The Ministry of Education recently went through a process that was somewhat more focused um, fairly broad in its consultation efforts, but very focused on the kinds of questions it asked related to education. The roundtable will be coming together, first of all, to design the questions and decide what key things do we want to speak with the community about. I anticipate that when we meet, we're going to be looking at three or four broad topics of conversation. And they'll be themed from what you saw a few slides ago. What are our hopes as a community? What are our challenges as a community? What do we want to accomplish as a community? That we can then have, through the various groups connected to the roundtable, a broad set of consultations across the community. Everybody has a chance to wade into the conversation. That's a huge challenge. But it's a challenge that excites me because it's different. And it's different for the right reasons that we need to hear from our broad community. Um, the people on the round table through their contacts will connect with the people in that broader community, will set up and through them, each individual group in the community has the opportunity to engage in its own consultation, gather its own feedback, and bring it back through the round table as a collecting body. The round table then has the responsibility to gather all of the community input. So who's on the round table? What we've done, again, this, this goes back to the conversation that I started in May with a, a thinking partner in Toronto, and we uh, worked through about six months of discussions back and forth to design a process that we're now, as I said, we're working through, 
but we continue to build the process as we move forward. And you'll see on there key sectors on the round table. That list is certainly not an exclusive list. One of the things that the round table will be charged with initially will be to say, okay, who's missing from the conversation? Who needs to be part of the round table initially? The key is by having the, sorry, by having the smaller group of people who are connected at the round table, the ability is there to reach across the broader community. And we will probably find that uh, one or two sectors may well be missing uh, in that group, and we'll add them in as we work through the process over the next couple of months. Our goal is to begin uh, with a meeting with the round table it is actually scheduled for next week. The process of consultation will take place from February through until about April. We will gather the feedback then and we'll take it the next step from there. I've already talked about the round table gathering the input. I want to comment on the final report because I think most people would like to know, so what happens if I put my two cents worth in? How do I know my two cents actually matter? The round table's job is to gather the input back and then put the input together into a final report back to the community from the round table. So the report is not from the Durham District School Board. It's not from community safety. It's not from social services. It's from the round table. And it's going to be speaking at the 50,000 foot level, what are our hopes and our dreams as a community? If we get this right, this is the exciting part. If we get this right, this generates a call to action because my hope is that every one of us will be able to see ourselves in what we see as the hopes, the dreams, and the aspirations of our community. And all of us then have the opportunity to grab part of the roundtable report back to the community and say, now how do I fit into this? As a school board, not so many years ago, if I turn the clock back 10 years or so, um, I can say that the view of education uh, of itself was very much of the opinion that we operate in our sandbox, you're not part of our sandbox, so you're outside. You can come in from time to time, but at the end of the day, our sandbox is our sandbox. We don't see ourselves that way anymore, and we haven't seen ourselves that way in some time. As I look around the room today, um, we are involved with many of you in a variety of partnership arrangements, and you work closely with us. And there, there are a couple of reasons for that. One of them is there's not enough money for us to do everything. There's not enough money for you to do everything. There's also not enough expertise in-house. Yes, we have 7,000 staff, but there are very, very highly skilled people across the community who can provide service, support, expertise, um, the, the, all the skill sets that we can't meet in-house. And we can gain from those by accessing those skill sets and using them in a partnership arrangement. And I won't go into what all the partnerships are because I would leave somebody out. But there are a huge number these days. So we see this as an, as an important process for us as a school board to see ourselves fitting into a larger community picture. Now some people have asked me, so what does that mean? You're no longer teaching and learning? No, of course not. Teaching and learning is still an important part of what we do as a school board. Literacy and numeracy is important for us as a school board. But so much of what we do has context that goes beyond the regular classroom environment. <clears throat> and what we'll take out of the consultation process will be from, from the round table report, I will be able to, with our trustees and with our senior staff, say, how do we fit into this larger community vision? What is our role in serving our 66,000 students? And my hope is that other people who have been involved in the consultation and other people who see the report across the community will say, well, hold on, I think I may have a piece of this. I think there may be something here that I can contribute to the community. That's where I get really excited because we see ourselves differently. We are, see ourselves as part of a larger whole. And the sandbox no longer has sides on it because we all work in the same sandbox together. The question that I leave you with this morning is what's your role in building the community? We have a collective vision. All of us have thoughts and opinions on where we need to be, on where we need to be going as a community. I invite every single person in this room through the process to share your thoughts, 
to engage in the process, to contact through your contacts, because every person in this room has connections through your own organization, to engage the people in those organizations and get the hopes, the dreams, the visions, the challenges and feed them back so that we can design a roundtable report through the roundtable that we can take back to the community. We're designing, uh, right now, uh, we're in the middle of putting together a website called durhamroundtable.ca. Once again, I'm going to keep hammering away at this. It's not a Durham District School Board site. It's a roundtable site. You'll see the logo on it. We'll have, uh, right now we're in the process of loading the website with uh, all of the information, the consultation notes. At the point that the roundtable meets, we will put together the questions for consultation. But we'll also put uh, with it facilitator notes, note-taking sheets, all the things that people need to make the consultation a turnkey operation to make it as easy as possible for people to gather information. Uh, the website isn't live yet. Uh, I reviewed the website uh, toward the end of last week. Stay tuned, it'll be up and running very shortly. Hopefully, uh, my comments this morning, I'm just about out of time for the, uh, the keynote, um, but I did want to leave uh, the opportunity for a few questions or put me on the hot seat with uh, thoughts that you have this morning. I'm very excited about the process. Hopefully you've seen a little bit of that in my comments this morning. I'm hoping that I've left you just a little bit excited yourself about the opportunity this presents for all of us across Durham.